Now, the rest of the story. All the firemen at Station 1 on East Broadway knew Skinny. Skinny was 13, he was slender and shy, as his nickname suggested, and his constant companion, his only friend as far as anybody can tell, was a big old springy-haired Airedale dog. That dog followed Skinny everywhere. Would have followed him all the way to school if the boy had not begun bringing him to the firehouse where the pooch slept all day until his young master returned for him each afternoon. The fireman liked Skinny, sort of felt sorry for him, teased and bullied as he was by the other boys. The meaner ones even called him little girl. Skinny just, just didn't fit in with the youngsters his age. He had a paper route, that was nice, read a lot of books in his spare time, but otherwise Skinny was just plain lonesome. Except, as I say, for that devoted Airedale dog. Now, one autumn morning, Skinny came by the firehouse to leave his dog for the school day when one of the firemen noticed the boy's lip was gashed and bleeding and one of his eyes was dark purple. Skinny, obviously ashamed, tried to hurry off, but this fireman, nobody remembers his name, this fireman said, Hey, Skinny, come here. And the youngster reluctantly obeyed. Who did this to you, the fireman asked. Well, Skinny explained about this one bully in particular, how he always taunted, Little girl, little girl, how come you wear pants instead of a dress? But this morning, Skinny had not managed to outrun his tormentor, and at that point in his story, Skinny began to cry. The fireman placed a brawny hand on the boy's shoulder. You know what I used to be, he said? A boxer? Professional, too. Pretty good in my day. And what I think you need is a few pointers, how to stand up for yourself. And that afternoon, after school, Skinny returned for his first boxing lesson. It was the first of several. And when next the bully chased him down, Skinny turned and stood his ground. The two boys fought to a draw that day, and yet more important than mere victory, what Skinny won for himself was the respect of his schoolmates. And so it began. You never knew this scared, scrawny schoolboy reborn in the Glendale, California firehouse in the autumn of 1920. The youngster whose feminine-sounding first name, Marion, had inspired the hated nickname, Little Girl. But now, I hope you will never forget the Glendale firefighter, who you might say created the man the world remembers with near reverence. And the fireman of station number one at 315 East Broadway created something else. A more respectable nickname for their young friend. You see, that Airedale dog the boy dropped off at the firehouse each day, his name was Little Duke. Little Duke. So to encourage his self-confidence in Little Duke's master, the fireman began calling the boy Big Duke. And that name, Big Duke, stuck. Even after the shy, skinny youngster, Marion, Michael, Morrison, even after he became Big Duke, the two-fisted, ultimately tough screen legend you knew as John Wayne, only now you know the rest of the story. Now, the rest of the story. It was midnight, almost precisely midnight, when the little girl rushed into her parents' room, shook her father awake. He, the vicar of Epworth, rubbing his eyes, asked what was the matter. The distraught child answered in gasping, fragmented phrases that sparks and cinders were showering down from the ceiling over her bed. Indeed, the rectory was on fire. The vicar gathered his wife, the rest of his children as quickly as he could, hurried him down the blazing staircase out into the yard. Only then did he realize that one small son was missing. The vicar bounded back into the rectory, but the fiery staircase collapsed under him. Barely escaping the conflagration, he staggered outside once more. And there he fell to his knees, praying that the little boy's death would at least come swiftly. But then somebody in the swelling crowd of onlookers spotted the child in a second-story window. So one man stood on the shoulders of another man and reached upward and pulled the vicar's son to safety just as the roof collapsed in flames. By the first light of morning, the fire was out. The rectory lay in smoking ruin. 
the vicar shuffled among the ashes of what had been his home and his earthly belongings, realizing sadly the cause of what had happened. An accident? Of course not. No, no. You see, the vicar had angered many of his parishioners by condemning their failings from the pulpit and by sympathizing with an unpopular candidate in a recent election. In any case, threats had been made, followed by some violence to the vicar's livestock and even to his pet dog. So, the fire this night passed was surely perpetrated by local enemies. The question remained, where was the vicar to go from here? And he asked himself this. In fact, his foot kicked something solid in the sooty debris, the scorched remnants of his treasured Bible. He picked it up, and he tenderly opened it. Only one verse was legible on the page before him, and there in the breaking dawn, he whispered those words. Go, sell all that thou hast, take up thy cross, and follow me. Well, in that instant, the vicar of Epworth decided what he must do. He must rebuild his home, and if thugs burned it again, he must rebuild it again, but he must never allow those who hated him to drive him from those who needed him, and he never did. Even though his trials were far from over, even though the following year he was imprisoned for debt, the vicar of Epworth maintained his devotion to all in need and his fierce optimism and, yes, even his sense of humor. The vicar's children grew up, honoring his remarkable example, especially the little boy narrowly snatched from the flames, February 9 and 1709. For more than two and a half centuries, the world has recognized and revered the man that boy became, Vicar Samuel Wesley's son. He was the father of Methodism, John Wesley. And one thing more, all of his adult life, John Wesley cryptically called himself a brand plucked from the burning. So many people never knew what he meant by that. You do, because now you know the rest of the story.